Well, hello, friends, and welcome to Boston.com's Cocktail Club. I'm Jackson Cannon, and soon I'll be joined by John E. Rodriguez, bartender at Six West in South Boston. Tonight, we're swirling our favorite stirred summer sippers, catching up on the restaurant and bar community, and of course, sharing some tips the pros use to make great drinks at home. I'm going to go through everything you need and all the why we're taking your question chat. Before you ask, this is a little bit of a different backdrop tonight. I find myself in Nashville, unable to be home at my usual Zoom bar to do this uh, half hour with you. So the good folks at Falcon Coffee Bar and the Flamingo Cocktail Club have um, made their loft available to me. Although there is a band getting ready for the evening's performance, so you might hear a little music in the background. So here we are, boston.com from the Cocktail Club from Music City. Um, all right, so we're gonna do these stirred, stirred summer sippers. I can't say it twice fast. I don't expect you to do it three times fast. And what you're gonna need is rye whiskey or cognac for the uh, Sazerac. You need some simple syrup. Of course, you'll need Peychaud's bitters from New Orleans. This is the key ingredient in the Sazerac. Um, some simple syrup, a rinse of absinthe um, and lemon peel for garnish. Um, and for a uh, sort of tropical fun rum old fashioned, you're gonna need um, some full bodied rum. John and I are both using Santa Teresa, the 1796. Um, and you'll need some bitters. You can use coffee or chocolate bitters if you have them. I have Angostura with me, that's what I'm gonna use. And John's gonna show us with um, how to make uh, with coconut, pineapple and sugar, that pina cocoa syrup for that drink. If you've got a lime handy, that's what we're gonna use to garnish. To stir, you'll just need either a, a stirring tin or a mixing glass. Um, long spoon's always nice for this. We are gonna be jiggering using our two over one and three quarter over half jiggers um, that have the little quarter ounce mark in there as well. Um, remember, half an ounce is a tablespoon. So if the recipe calls for two ounces, that's four tablespoons. Um, highly accurate way to measure drinks. We don't do it in the bar that way because it's just not as fast. Um, okay, wanted to get a couple of questions from sign in. And uh, Beth asked where she can find past cocktail club uh, videos. She's having a hard time finding them all in one place. We are working on that, Beth. Um, in the meantime, if you want to DM me at Canon Jacks on either Instagram or Twitter, I'll make sure to uh, get those, um, the ones you're looking for. I'll, I'll make sure to dig them up and find them for you and let you all know when we have those in one place. Nancy asked what time of rum is recommended. Um, we are going to use the Santa Teresa but any full body uh, of your rums with dew plantation five year would be great in this drink. Um, any of uh, a Jamaican rum I think would show really, really well. So whatever you've got for your favorite rum, you can mix right along with us in that cocktail. And let's see, Jill's asking about the pina cocoa syrup. And like I said, John's gonna take a moment, show us how to just whip that up right in the blender. All right, so since 2004, Puerto Rican John E. Rodriguez has made his name in hospitality as a bartender and entrepreneur. He helped open Small Bar and My Pen Rye in San Juan with their respected and innovative bar programs. After Hurricane Maria, John looked to his connections in the Boston bar scene for next steps in his growth behind the stick. As he arrived here, he created the Bartender's Face Off, a recurring traveling competition with proceeds benefit benefiting Puerto Rico's recovery. He joined the Hawthorne's team as a bartender in the late 2017, currently can be found at Six West in South Boston. He also works as Santa Teresa's rum brand specialist for Massachusetts, full disclosure, spreading the rum love to everyone everywhere. Additional accolades of his include the winner of Boston's Woodford Manhattan Experience in 2019, uh, winner of Espelon Cocktail Fights Boston versus New England in 2019, and he worked Portland Cocktail Week that same year as well. He's a rummer a lover of rum-based and other stirred cocktails, and a good friend. Welcome, John. Hey, Jackson. How you doing? Hey, buddy. Well, I'm a little distracted with sound check going on down there, but uh, <laughs> great to see your face. No, definitely. Good to see you, too. What's going on at Six West these days? Man, Six West, uh, just like a beautiful roof deck over at um, on South Boston. Uh, we've just been, like, working our, you know, Working, working off and just making cool cocktails, super like refreshing. It's kind of like summertime. So we just been like, you know, cranking some tropical flavors into like our cocktails using some like of the 
some like acai or some like acerolas, uh, which is kind of like Caribbean cherries into like, you know, just trying to like keep the thirst uh, quench, right? Just trying to like keep it cool, cooling down for the people that, uh, for the guests that actually are visiting us. Oh, that's totally awesome. Um, I love that spot. I think uh, I slipped up there on a cloudy day, so I kind of had it to myself. <laughs> um, but uh, but uh, the big, all the pictures I see when it's sunny and packed also look great, you know? No, definitely. Um, what do you hear from our friends down in Puerto Rico these days? Uh, you and I both Man, love everything. a lot of those great bars down there. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, everything's uh, slowly, but surely it's opening back up. Um, one of my favorite bars, La Penultima, and I think we we won one time. Um, they actually open up again. So, you know, small steps. Um, everything's little by little just getting back up to normal. Um, and super, super happy that, you know, it's coming up as well. Well, hey, uh, I'm really looking forward to getting back down there when things get uh, all settled down in the coming years. I know you are too. Um, hey, shall we make a drink while we're talking? I'm getting kind of thirsty. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Let's let's do it. What do you got right. in mind? Uh, I'm gonna make a Sazerac. You make one with me? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I uh, just want to talk about sweetness for a second on this. Sazerac is an old-fashioned style drink. Um, it's built off of this platform of sugar and bitters and then spirit and water. Um, and uh, we make a simple syrup one to one works very well for this. A Demerara syrup is lovely. Uh, you can use alternate sweeteners too, but you start to veer a little bit away from it being Sazerac if you're not using just like straight sugar. And for a long time, um, I used even more uh, simple syrup than I'm going to use today. I, I really think the level of sweetness in this drink isn't where um, there, there, there's a balance that's happening between all the ingredients, but there's a level of sweetness that can go up and down really depending on your taste. And um, where there's some other old fashions where I might just do a quarter ounce, I'm gonna do a full half ounce of simple syrup to build the base for this drink. I'm using a lot of bitters, a lot of whiskey. There's also this absinthe flavor that's gonna be brought in. And I just feel like um, this, one, this one works a little on the sweeter side. If you know you don't like that, um, and you know, <laughs> You should know that about yourself by now. Like you probably have said, oh, I like old fashions a little less sweet. Then maybe you want to pull back and just do a quarter ounce and we can all be happy. So I'm going to start with just a half ounce of simple syrup. Half ounce? Just a half ounce in mine. Um, and then it says six dashes of peychauds and there is no okay. substitute for peychauds really. Um, I'm going to do at least six, maybe nine. Oh, this bottle's doing well. It's I like in the mid spot. Um, to me, like this is the dominant flavor of the drink. Um, and you can't, you can't really overdo it. Um, there are recipes out there that call for like a drop of a bitter. Usually they have different things going on and, and, and the bitters are there to kind of activate and pull flavors together without being a main character. This one, it is the main character. Um, now I'm going to make mine with rye whiskey. This is the traditional original version of this drink from the 19th century was with whiskey. Uh, we did a little, we did a little deep dive on that with the help of David Wondrich and kind of realized that cognac version, while lovely and wonderful and often what I choose to do is um, something that comes later that sounds older. Uh, but I'm in Tennessee today, so I'm going to have the full measure of whiskey. You can do an ounce of whiskey split with an ounce of cognac. You can do two ounces of cognac if that's your thing, but I'm going to do two ounces of Rittenhouse rye. Now I have most of the stuff. I sort of skipped a step here that I want to double back on and I get a chill on my glass. Um, not working where I uh, got them in a chiller. So I'm just going to actually put a little bit of ice in my glass just to get a little chill on it. Okay. We're saving the absinthe for later. We're going to rinse a little bit in the glass um, just to get a touch of that flavor. So now I'm going to put some ice in my tin. And I'm going to, you can't see it, but I'm not going to like bang this ice all around and I tip it so you can. I'm just going to slide my spoon in on one end and I'm going to carefully start by rotating the ice around. Now you can see it really well in John's shake there. Do you see how all that ice is moving in concert as one thing? And at first it's a little bit tight. And people always 
fast, like how many turns is it? And you, you can't really know because conditions change. I want to say one thing and not get us bogged down in the science of it. Most of the cooling and dilution happens rapidly. Um, and then a little bit more of it happens as you go on and things get um, worked together. You're in more danger of underdoing this than you are of overdoing it. You can overdo it, but you're in more danger of underdoing it. So one of the things I like about the tin, you can kind of see it if you look closely in my picture, is it's starting to get a layer of frost on it. And that's how I know that I'm getting really close here. And with John's, you can see that his ice is sort of relaxed on him. He probably felt that in his hand, actually. If you stir it enough, um, that's what happens. So and now I've got it definitely, that. It definitely feels a little bit more lighter, actually just moving around the, the mixing yeah. glass. That's one of those wonderful moments when you're not looking at what you're doing in the crowd of bar, John. I know you've <laughs> had this, you know, and you're stirring something and you feel it do the right, you feel it go the right way, you know? So, um, sure. all right, I'm going to just transfer that over to my other glass to keep chilling there. I'm going to take tiny drops of absinthe. Now on the bar, sometimes we keep these in little droppers or sprayers. Really don't need much. Um, I know it's going to seem a little bit like a waste, but what I'm going to do as I'm just, and you can see it kind of gets sort of nice and luscious in there. I'm just going to spin it around till it's on the glass. And then I'm just going to dump mine out into a bucket so that the glass is coated. Um, I got a, I got a mister not, over here in spray. Yeah, the mister's, the mister's good. You know, I, it's, it's a little lighter that way. I, I think it's good a little heavier too. And then I'm gonna just strain this beautiful brickish lusty red. Yes. Red. I'm, so I'm really ready way. for this one already. <laughs> um, and then I'm not gonna put the uh, lemon peel in. Stanley Arthur's book, Famous New Orleans Drinks and How to Drink Them has a line about don't insult your guests by dropping the peel in there. You know, some people do, some people don't. Some people want it to sit there and, and go a little bit. I'm going to skip it. But what I'm going to actually do while I'm making my peel, I'm even going to do it right over my drink, just carefully peeling back side of the lemon. Now you can cut this twist off with a knife. Remember, this pit side is the inside of it is not what you want going into the drink. The outside of the lemon peel is what you want to face into the drink. It's where all the good oil is. And then I'm going to give a little bang. You saw that zest come out rim it sometimes maybe even put a little around the glass so it gets on your guests or your hands and voila the sazerac yes salute cheers bud Ding. cheers mate <laughs> oh that's lovely that is that is so cool you know the best things are the simplest things done right this thing has just got like great texture and I get so much of like the Seville orange and, uh, and like the, the coriander coming from the bitters, right? You know, like it's true. so well with the whiskey. Mm. And, and hey, of you course, remember where you had? Yeah. What were you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say that it just like, it's, it's great for summer just because it feels that, you know, that lemon says it actually pumps up all the other um, ingredients. And it's just like, as long as you stir it a little bit more, I like mine a little bit more stirred, so it makes a little bit more dilution. Um, so definitely, it just like, it's refreshing. Uh, like a hot summer day, super cold, just because I like it that way, more dilution means it's gonna be a little bit colder too. Um, but yeah, just comes out so good. Well, it's funny too. It's like, you know, people think of like whiskey drinks in the fall and the winter and they have their great place there. But what this mm -hmm. drink with all these bitters and all this booze and this bitter <laughs> sugar, like your, your body just like, like craves that sugar and then your pores just kind of dilate on it. And you can literally just feel yourself getting cooler. It's really not the coolness of the drink. It's the booziness of it that's cooling you down <laughs> most of all, I think, you know? True. Um, so, you know, and, and, not, and not for nothing, most of us really do associate drinking this drink in a place that it's awfully hot in the summer. Um, yeah and it's not really citrus season do you remember where you had your first sazerac um so it definitely was back in puerto rico when when we were like just like 
going through all the like classic cocktails and like uh, self learning what are the classic cocktails. Um, but I think where I actually got the you know the crave or the actual that I saw that the Sazerac is a big thing. Um, I'm gonna have to say on a Sunday night at a uh, drink. <laughs> One of the great rituals. Uh, John Gertzen, who opened Drink, would make Sazeracs for the whole bar on Sunday night, Sazerac Sundays. He'd make them at midnight. And then, um, yeah. you know, I've, I've had the good fortune of being waiting to go get on a red eye in San Francisco when he was at ABV years later. And he's, he makes them there at 9 p.m. So it's the same time. <laughs> it's the same time. As back here. Oh, yeah. And uh, all, nice. all the different managers that have that have worked there since have kept that tradition alive. And it's just, it's, it's an amazing thing. You find it out there on a Sunday, you know, I, yeah. I, I uh, uh, you know, Britt, who was kind of the third, the third manager there after uh, John and Ezra, um, she had her last day while the bar was closed for renovation. So Palmer, who is also True. a big proponent of them, posted her down at Pearl and Lime <laughs> last week for uh, Britt's last night at drink posted by Pearl and Lime. You had to be careful. You went to the right spot. Um, but they did it at midnight. They they put out 40 Sazeracs and I and I tasted one and I thought, oh man, this is I felt like I was back in time, you know. So uh, that that's that is great. great. And yeah, no, definitely. And and to see like how they actually just build it up in masses, like you know, to build mm -hmm. 40 Sazeracs in, in one take. <laughs> I seen her just grab like a huge uh punch bowl and just like you know, measure everything, put it down over there, and just like put a huge block of ice. And just like stir it and stir it and yeah. stir it and yeah it's just the it's yeah the whole thing is just amazing because the sazerac it's so amazing too the sazerac bowl now that that that's 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 my kind of bottle service um <laughs> so you know um you know i i i got a chance to read what you wrote about kind of like um your approach to old fashions i just thought it was really wonderful that you you know grown up as a bartender with this Puerto Rican like understanding of tropical flavors and how they mix and drinks and certain um, uh, combinations that are really foundational to a lot of uh, those, those classic uh, fruitier drinks. Um, tell us a little bit about how you thought to bring that towards the old fashioned because it's really not, um, not at first thought a set of ingredients you would associate with a drink like that. No, definitely. Um... Yeah, just, just being in Puerto Rico, you know, normally it's kind of like from 80 to 90 degrees and up every time, every single day. Um, the the coldest that it gets is like 62 degrees. And this is like, you know, record um, uh, temperature, 62 degrees in the highest mountain in Puerto Rico in the coldest day. And that's actually, I think like right now in, in Massachusetts or over here in Boston, because of the cloudiness, it's about like 70 degrees. So that's normal for us over here. Um, but yeah, like in Puerto Rico, you would think um, right. that, you know, season changes and all that stuff, it's, it's not a thing. It's always the same weather. Um, so for us, being on, on, on a hot weather, uh, it's actually what it means. It's just like we want to refresh ourselves. We want to like, you know, be cool and actually just like have your on doing your favorite lemonade and all that stuff. And of course, um, growing up, then you get to like you know put a little boost over there and a little it start with vodka or something else and you just you know uh get it going um so yeah we we are uh <laughs> we are definitely uh used to like tropical fruits like i will go to my backyard and just grab a mango from the tree just rip open it uh, with my mouth and just eat it because that's you know that's what we do in the in the island um so transferring that into cocktail making um again you know you have all these amazing cocktails classic cocktails they are from probably the northeast of like uh, united states so you have like the manhattan you have like of course the old-fashioned you have like the salsa like negronis all these flavors they are you know bitter flavors they are not we are not used to it definitely not used to it down in the island um so for us just like oh can i have a manhattan cool i want to try it but when i try it i'm like Ah, um, it's not that, you know, it's not what I expected. And you can't have that, you know, while sitting on the beach um, with the sun hitting you on the head. Um, it'll, it'll drive you a little crazy, though. Um, so, yeah, we just wanted to, like, incorporate um, to incorporate any of the flavors that we already wanted um, by making different syrups, different mixtures. Um, 
yeah and then again like if you talk about the old fashioned it's just um it's just uh, the spirit the um, whatever syrup you're using some bitters and some ice or water for dilution and, and temperature so yeah when you talk about old fashioned um that's what it you know that's what it actually is well let's show them how you make this uh how you make this syrup as the building block yeah no definitely so it, it's pretty easy yep it's so super go easy nice slow so we can follow along i i was able to to do it earlier but um... yeah so let me take this out so i'm just going to use the same jigger as we as a measuring cup that we're using okay. so we're going to do same amount of coconut water pineapple juice and sugar so I'm using Vita Coco, which is a coconut water that you can find in any supermarket or any pharmacy or whatever. It's really tasty. Um, it's a little bit different than, than the coconut water uh, from the actual coconut. The coconut water from the actual coconut is a little bit more salty. Of course, it's, it's right in the beach. So it's um, this one to be a little bit more refreshing. I think it has a little bit more sugar. Um, so just adding a little bit more sugar, it won't, uh, it won't actually, you know, make it bad. Um, so I put two ounces of coconut water and then, uh, I'm going to use the, um, dough, uh, pineapple juice, easy. You can totally do, you know, um, get a, a pineapple, cut it and just blend it. It'll bring some juice. Of course you'll have some pulp, but if you want a cleaner, um, product, you want something better or not better but you know cleaner then you can use totally a can um and juice pineapple juice so i'm gonna do the same two ounces of pineapple give me one second and then we're gonna do the same thing with the sugar so this is fine sugar just like regular white sugar awesome yeah and you're gonna use your jigger kind of like easier this way and just put it all the way to the top and again friends, the, you're using tables tablespoons you're doing four tablespoons of each and that's going to give you enough of this stuff to make this drink all month long which is awesome definitely because you can you can reserve yeah. this syrup in the fridge after it's made and use it when you buy it you know so i have the two ounces mark and then awesome yeah so why we need a blender i thought it's the best and fastest way so i got kind of mm -hmm. like a ninja bullet right over here awesome yeah so yeah you can see that the actual um yep. sugar just stays down in the bottom and then the liquid on top but if we just blend it like this yeah one of the nice things too about doing a blended simple syrup is you know we always talk about only warming it up the minimum amount to make the syrup but here even doing that would kind of change the character of the coconut and pineapple and what john's done by doing a blended simple with these flavors is just lock in a very vibrant really fresh cool version of that no no cooked yeah. flavor to it Brilliant. so at, at the wow. beginning you're gonna see uh it's kind of like a little frothy uh, just because of the pineapple, it creates a little bit more of that frothiness. Um, but definitely, mm -hmm. it will sit down. And once it's settled down, it just look, it will look just like this. Awesome. Yeah. So you again, Martha Stewart you're like, moment. You like put that down. <laughs> <laughs> you put oh, yeah. that one down and pull that one out. So so now definitely, and and that it will help on on the on the um, confection of the cocktail, just because it's going to be a little bit more liquidified. And it's definitely going to have uh, a little bit more bisque of a um, of a flavor of, of a of a mouthfeel. Sorry. Awesome. All right, let's build the drink off of it. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we're going to use uh, for the first part of the of the cocktail. I, I really enjoy using the least amount uh, of product that we're using into the building a cocktail. So I'm going to do the beaters first. Um, we're going to do two dashes of beaters. I'm using a coffee beaters from Santa Teresa. Uh, awesome. Our friend down in Miami, um, in Cafe La Trova, he created this one uh, with a beater cube. 
So it's kind of like a little bit more coffee forward. So we're going to do two dashes. So I'm going to use Angostura, friends. If you have that one, you can sub it in. It won't have quite the same complement, but the cinnamon in here, I think, will work really well with these flavors as well as the coffee flavor does. So. Definitely. For, for our sweetener, again, we're going to use the pineapple and coconut um, syrup, and we're going to do three quarters of the piña and coconut syrup. So this part is a little bit like tricky. You can totally like uh, do it however you like it. If you like a little bit on the sweeter side, you can put a little bit more, um, but as well, like all the flavors are gonna come up nice and balanced if you use just like a half an ounce or like three quarter ounce. I like it a little bit sweeter, but then again, I'm gonna stir a little bit more on the, while I'm, while I'm making it. And I'm gonna use Santa Teresa 1796, which is a, Venezuelan rum that is made in a solera process. So we're going to do two ounces. By the way, I really enjoy this part when all, all the ingredients come together and there's just like a whiff comes up and you're like, yes, this is this is what I'm getting at. I'm gonna do a full, full scoop of ice. Trying to, you know, go on top of the liquid. And as the same as we did with the Sazerac, we're just gonna start stirring, you know, little by little. It doesn't matter how fast or how slow you stir, you know, as long as the ice is going around and the dilution is happening, um, yeah, you can do this however you like. If you don't have a bar spoon, you can totally use like a like a straw, like a metal straw, or maybe like um, like a chopstick if you have one on your house. Chopstick works good. A dinner knife also will do the trick. You don't have Definitely. Um, and actually, for temperature, I normally like to touch the you know your tin or your mixing glass, and once you know that it's cold enough, you, you'll know. You'll, you'll get it on your, on your hands. Yeah, I just always, we can't stress it enough. It's not a product of turns. It's not a product of time. It's a product of temperature. Yeah, You're looking for definitely. it to be as cold as you want it to be, and then everything else will take care of itself. Yep. So I do enjoy my, my old fashions in a big cube. There you go. So you, you can do it as, as you want with like normal cubes or anything, but what it does, it just holds down the temperature and keeps up the, the dilution into what it's meant to be for the cocktail. And for a final, final touch on the cocktail, we're gonna do a lime peel. It definitely brings up all the flavors from the rum and it brightens it up a little bit more. So that pineapple, awesome. that, sugar, uh, that coconut actually comes out really, really nice. Well, I can't wait to try this, John. Oh. Cheers. Salute. Whoa. I like that. That's wild, man. That's like, it's hanging on the line between a juice drink and a, and a bitter stirred drink. It's both, it's both <laughs> of those things. It's great. And that's really neat. No, definitely. It's a, it's, it's, it's a cool thing. Like, again, like just, you know, coming from Puerto Rico and our national drink is the piña colada. And for the piña colada, you use rum, you use uh, pineapple juice and coconut cream. Same, all those flavors are yeah. right in, in this cocktail, but a little no. bit lighter, a little bit more refreshing, and it's not, you know, it doesn't give you the. People... Yeah, it, does, it doesn't give you the, <laughs> the 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 brain freeze that normally a pina colada will do. Yeah, yeah. I was actually thinking people that like uh, 
juice drinks that have a little Amaro in them might really mm-hmm. like this drink because it kind of, you know, it, 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 it kind of operates with like a lot more bitter, I think, than you sometimes see in like a juicy drink that would have sure. these flavors. Um, and, and it's got the strength of the rum. It's almost too, it's, there's, a, there's an aspect of this feels like very modern, tropical, uh, you know, like a post-tiki kind of, you know, set of flavors, like real strong architecture, John. It's just, just a great drink. When can oh, people thanks. come visit you at uh, Six West and, and ask you <laughs> I'm, I'm normally, on the fly? Yeah, definitely. You won't have that. I have to yeah, run around, I find do, that. I can totally do that it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm definitely over here Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, normally Sundays are kind of like my best day to actually um, to actually come in. I like Sundays because it's kind of like the end of the weekend and you, you just kind of like chill, relax, enjoy the sunset over here. If you haven't seen the sunset from the uh, 14th uh, floor rooftop, you definitely have to. You're missing it. Um, and just enjoy it like a really nice cocktail again. Well, whether um, whether whether they're stopping by to try this incredibly innovative take on a rum old fashioned or getting a traditional Sunday Sazerac with that sunset, um, true. hoping people get by to see you. If you can't get by to see him too, you can hit his tip jar for today's session. Uh, his Venmo is at John Drinks Rum. Um, it's been great to have you, bud. You know, no, thank you for the invite. Definitely. That's all the time we have for Cocktail Club. Uh, Follow me or follow Globe Events, both on Instagram. For more information about upcoming Boston.com Cocktail Club events, Um, hit me up directly on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter by searching for at Cannon Jacks or follow Boston.com and Globe Events. Really, really great to be here with you folks. See you very soon. Thanks, John. Thank you, Jackson.